Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Taco Tuesday. We'll quickly go around and introduce ourselves. I'm going to start with Kathy and kind of work my way around the Zoom screen. Uh, Kathy Robertson, uh, Director of uh, Fiscal and Support Services. Good morning, everyone. Carla? Carla King, Principal El Dorito Middle School. Uh, Bruce? Bruce Lawling, Principal El Dorito High School. Susan? Susan Althaus, Principal at Grandview Elementary. I'll go up to Chad. Chad Sheets, Principal at Blackmore Elementary. And Doug? Uh, Doug Jensen, Executive Director of Technology. Welcome. And Julie? Good morning, Julie Jensen, Executive Director of Curriculum. And we have a special guest this morning. Chandra, will you introduce yourself? Good morning. My name is Chandra Spears. I'm the Director of Food Service. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. So yes, that's the first topic we're going to talk about. We are excited to announce, and I'm going to let Chandra kind of take it over, so I'll do the drum roll. Um, we're excited to announce this is really one of our, our good things, that we are able to serve weekend meals now as well as part of our food pickup. So I'm going to turn it over to Chandra to explain that, and then we'll talk a little, I'll, sh I'll show you some of the logistical sides on the back end, but Chandra, you want to talk about the, the great opportunity that that is? Sure. Uh, one of the opportunities that we now have uh, the federal government opened up along with the free meals was the opportunity to provide weekend meals for the kids. So on Fridays, when you order your meal for your students, um, we will automatically include meals for Saturday and for Sunday. And, and does that include order. breakfast and lunch? Correct. It, it'll be breakfast and lunch. So it's Friday breakfast, lunch, Saturday breakfast, lunch, Sunday breakfast, lunch. And you will also receive six milks to go along with that as well. Awesome. And what is the age limit on that piece? If I can pick it up at the high school. Oh, so one to 18 is eligible and the child does not have to be present. Um, if you want to pick up for your friends, kids, if they don't have a ride, just let us know and we'll get those meals to you. You can drop them off as well. Great. So that's the exciting part. If you're going to uh, the high school from Chandra, what 1230, time? 1230 to 130. So 1230 to 130, drive up to the high school, Go through the bus lane um, and you'll see them there. They're standing out there ready and willing and able to pass out those meals for anybody ages one and up so to 18. So we're excited about that. Um, what happens if we don't have a Friday that week, Chandra? We are going to go off the last day of the school week. So for example, uh, the week of Thanksgiving, when Tuesday is the last day of our school week, we will include the meals with the order for that day. Will that be meals for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Is it everything? Um, so at this time, it's just the two additional meals. Okay. Um, if I'm able to, um, I'll just surprise you <laughs> and I'll put them in there, but definitely it'll be the two additional meals along with Tuesdays. Awesome. All right, um, building principles, do you have any questions about that, Carla? Just Chandra, do they need to order ahead of time for those meals and how do they do that? So that would be amazing. It really, really does help us plan. Um, we, uh, you will order that the same way you're ordering for your student. Um, I think Therese is gonna go through it. You don't have to put an order, a special order in for the weekend. Simply go and order for Friday or the last school day of the week and we'll automatically have those meals ready for pickup for you. Okay, so can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Shandra's exactly right. We would love for you to go in and actually order your meals ahead of time. It allows us to prepare the correct number of meals. It allows us to um, make sure we have, you know, we don't have meal overages and those kinds of things or shortages. So if you go to our main webpage, eldoradoschools.org, it takes you to this site right here. Um, you'll just right under quick links, the third one down says daily meal ordering. You click on that. And then you're going to order for your particular um, spot. Each, stu each student. Yep. So I would go, I could, I could go to the high school right up here. And I would fill out, um, is my school on in school or remote? 
I would answer that question, and then I would off pick my meal choice. Correct, Chandra? Am I missing anything? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Um, so, so just so there's no confusion, because this is new, I think, for some of the elementary parents. Um, Currently, they don't order online, but the middle school and high school students order for themselves daily um, this way. So that's the in-school option. So anytime you're ordering pickup meals um, to take home, it's just the hybrid. You just select the hybrid model one. And I could do that from any building, correct? I would just go to where my mm -hmm. child goes to school. Correct. Okay. So um, there's the mail pickup order form for Grandview. So yes. I and I done this was kind of built before when we, we've made some changes, but um, it's breakfast and lunch. But again, if your name shows up, I'm going to count it as a body and I'm going to make the meal. So if you're not sure, just select something and I'll get I'll get you there. And I would just do this for every if I have three kids at Grandview, I would fill out the form three times. Yep. So that it counts every single child. If yes. I have kids who are younger, I would add if I have a two-year-old, I would add an extra Grandview form. Perfect. All right. Okay, for those of you watching, um, any questions on that, add that to the chat or the Q&A, and we will an be sure to answer those. But we are super excited to offer um, those additional meal options for our families um, to help yeah. out through the weekends. So again, totally free. Doesn't cost a thing. Just come join us. Come pick up those yeah. meals at... Um, the high school right now in the drive through in the bus lane, kind of on the east side of the uh, building. We have a, there's a little sign out right um, as you enter the bus lane. It says free meals for kids pick up. Free meals that way, yeah. All right, great job. Yep. Thank you. Yep. All right, um, other good things happening in your buildings. We'll have to I'll start with the middle okay, school. Carla. <laughs> um, very excited um, about our kids um, making sure that they're logging in each and every class period on Zoom. Um, they're really doing a great job. Um, for some reason, uh, even personally, um, we've had some internet issues at, at my house. So I know that's kind of, and I don't know if it's just because we have so many kids trying to access or what, but um, so kids just keep trying and um, parents, we know this is difficult and we appreciate your help. Please, please be sure you ask, ask questions if you have any um, that you need answered, we'd be glad to help. So um, kids keep up the great work and um, you're doing a great job. Parents, you're doing a great job. They are. All right, one more. Somebody else got something great going on at their buildings? Because I know you do. At Blackmore, we are having our I do. family night. Oh, I'm, I'm talking, Mrs. Holthouse. Hold on just a minute. She's my bestie, so I can say that to her. <laughs> We've worked that out. Um, we are having our, our family night tonight, and it's all virtual, and um, all of the uh, content we recorded at one of our teacher's farms, and so we're really excited about it. It's very different. We've never done anything like it before, and so um, we're excited for our families to to take part in our virtual night tonight. So we'll see how it goes. And tell us the name of it, because it's got kind of a cute name. It's called S'more Learning, and um, uh, we're sending home s'more bags with kids um, today for their families so that they can um, join in the fun and make a s'more um, at their home this evening, uh, hopefully not by a fire. Uh, and we talked about that in the little welcome video <laughs> uh, because it got a little hot that day that we did that, so. That's awesome. Well, have fun with that tonight, Chad. That's awesome. Okay, Susan. Okay. Um, what I wanted to do is compliment our students. We've got a lot of siblings that are really the big brothers or big sisters are helping the little ones. It's fun to watch them. As they come in the door, they'll help them get masked up or they're walking them in. Um, it's just fabulous to see the different kids that are watching over their littles. And um, it's amazing. Uh, the other thing is um, I want to compliment our staff. Our staff has been doing a fabulous job of being flexible and filling in here, there, everywhere. Uh, Mr. Claire came over. We were short on some uh, support staff yesterday and came over and did helped us with lunch duty. Got that covered. So that's very impressive. And we as well have a title night this week on Thursday. Put in my little plug. 
uh, you'll be receiving the information and the link for our virtual uh, family night on Thursday, and I'll get that link sent out by School Messenger, okay? Awesome. We have done some very unique and fun things with um, online events recently. I'm pretty proud of us. And, and I believe that Jennifer Davis has gone over to help out at Blackmore with lunch duty as well. Um, I really appreciate all of our staff pitching in. We really are putting this together as a district effort um, to support each other. And that is pretty um, powerful. And I really appreciate that. Um, and our staff are stepping up to the plate. That's, that's pretty awesome. That's really what it's all about at the end of the day. Um, okay, a few questions we had in Taco Tuesday in the um, kudos, comments, questions, and kudos link. Um, the first one has to do with, are we having a swim season with meats? And I believe the answer to that is we have a pool that is full of water. <laughs> and I believe practice started yesterday, right, Mr. Lolling? Uh, that is correct. Uh, practice began yesterday. Um, we do have a, a pool full of water. I do understand that it's a little chilly uh, at this point. It has not warmed up yet, but uh, they we do have a pool full of water. We will be having meets. Unfortunately, we will not be able to have spectators at those meets, but we are working with uh, the, our athletic director, Scott Bang, is working with ways to uh, potentially stream that if, if we can um, so that we can have so that so we can still watch um but our natatorium is not large enough for us to have both teams and spectators and so that is one that we're going to have to limit and have no no spectators for meets but we will be still having meets um at this time yes and that is that it uh, it is unfortunate about the the spectators we really are trying our best to get people in there and involved and um, but we really want the kids playing um, that is our biggest priority number one probably um, getting them out there, getting them playing, getting them on the courts, um, making sure that they're having those um, opportunities. So we appreciate that. That was a great question. Um, the other questions have a, a little bit to do with kind of what's happening in districts around us. Um, some of the question was uh, 259, Wichita schools um, have extended their Thanksgiving break. I think you saw that on the news this morning. Um, will this be a consideration for USD 490? Um, I believe, and some of that really comes down to how your contracts are built, um, the amount of time that you have to, we have a required number of hours we have to be in school. Every district, it, we count it the same, but um, you have different numbers of professional learning days, you have different number of work days based on the contract that you have in your district. And we have built in enough time for us to have actual snow days right now where, um, because there are districts that are using the remote time for snow days, we have built in enough time that we can still have our calendar the way we have it and still give our kids and our staff and our families those traditional snow days. So I believe Wichita is using their snow days for that time and then any future snow days that they might have would be for, um, would be a remote day. Right now we haven't uh, decided to, to make that switch. We're gonna use our snow time first and then um, if snowmageddon would happen to hit, we would um, be able to have that time built in and use remote time after we use our snow days. There's some other ways we can use those snow days in the spring if we need to, but um, right now we're just going to kind of continue with the calendar that we have. The other question has to do with um, Circle. Uh, they had a meeting this morning, and I was not aware of this, to discuss going fully remote after Thanksgiving break. Is this something we are also thinking about? Um, for us, that is not how we're kind of building our, our decision-making process. We've changed the gating team, has, has taken some feedback, and we're changing a little bit of what we do to um, give parents some additional consistency. So we're now going to try to release. The first part of that is to release the um, decision. We meet on Thursday afternoons to release that decision that night so that parents have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to make plans and arrangements. That was one of the pieces of feedback that we took. The other piece was we're still gonna continue to meet weekly, but we're gonna try to make our decisions in a two week period. So we'll make a decision one week that will last the two weeks. And then in the middle of that, we'll kind of have a monitoring meeting to make sure that um, if things would happen to get dramatically better, we could bring kids back sooner. Our goal is always to have kids in classes with us. We know that's where the best learning takes place. And we want our kids with us, um, frankly, all the time. So 
that middle meeting will be if there's something that's dramatically better or um, if we need to, we may be making a decision this week to allow parents that week after Thanksgiving um, because the timing is gonna be a little off with Thanksgiving. So we may go ahead and make a decision this week that may go that following week after. Um, we have decided not to make long-term decisions so that we're more able to adapt to whatever the situation might be at the time. So our window is kind of a couple of weeks at a time. I know others are thinking um, finishing out a semester or going um, till in the end of, I've heard December, January, um, we haven't made those decisions. We're going in kind of shorter chunks of time. Did I miss anything on that? Anybody want to chime in? Okay, if you do, feel free. Okay, this one may be more for um, the middle school and the high school. My child is struggling with remote learning. Um, is the school considering assigning or allowing extra credit because um, we don't want to hurt their GPAs? Carla or Bruce want to weigh in on that? I would, I would ask um, the parent who responded to that or sent that question to maybe reach out to myself or, or Mr. Lawling, just so we can get more information. Um, I think every situation is, is different for um, each class period. So, um, you know, questions would be um, what's going on that we're struggling, that we would need extra credit. Um, is there something that we can do to help with that? Um, so that would probably be whoever sent that, if you can please reach out to, to myself or Mr. Lawling, that would help. Mr. Lawling, you have anything else? Well, I would, I would add that it probably would be more productive for them to reach out directly to the teachers first. Um, you know, we, we want to give the teachers as much autonomy in their classrooms to, to work with the students and, and work with the parents uh, and allow for whatever needs to happen within the classroom. Uh, if if that's already happened, then I would say then I would agree and echo what what Mrs. King said. Please reach out to us and let us know. We we're happy to work with with parents and teachers to make sure that students are able to to get the best that they possibly can out of this situation. We recognize this is not ideal for for any of our students, and we would much rather, as Ms. Tosh has, has mentioned several times, we would much rather have students in the building, in their classrooms because that's when the best learning takes place. So we're willing to work in with, with everybody in, in whatever way we can. Absolutely. Okay, before we get to the wrap up portion, um, any other questions out there um, in the chat or there's a couple of kudos in the chat that I'm gonna save here for just a second. Okay, well, I'm gonna give you a challenge. I'm gonna challenge staff and I'm gonna challenge um, our community. Um, it is National Education Week, and um, we have some amazing educators in this district. And uh, my challenge to you is to take a minute, send them an email, send them a text, send them a Facebook message, let them know how much you appreciate them. I don't think we spend enough time doing that. So um, send out um, some sort of um, affirmation that says, hey, thank you for what you've done. Um, to be honest, I sent one this morning to two very important people who um, I hope know that they meant a lot in my life and in my career. And so um, those moments are important. So my challenge to you this week is reach out to those teachers, let them know, any of our staff actually, let them know how much they mean to you. Um, it's important, every person in this district who has stepped up um, from cleaning our classrooms to keeping our kids safe, to providing meals, to the maintenance um, and custodial guys who are out there and gals who are out there um, cleaning our sidewalks in the ice and the snow. We appreciate you, um, our teachers, our support staff. We couldn't do it without you. And we, um, it's important that they know that. So that's my challenge to you this week is go out there and let those people know. So here are your two kudos. We have two kudos in the chat room and in the Q&A. One says kudos to teachers, all staff and admin for making the best out of the current situation. Uh, we really are trying to do everything we can for our students. So we appreciate that. And the second one says, I just wanna tell you how much we appreciate the work and dedication that's being put in to continue our children's learning even when being remote or quarantined. I know this is difficult for the school district and especially for working families, but I wanna acknowledge you all for your efforts. Um, we appreciate that. We are doing our very best to support the community. Um, we appreciate those of you that are out there that are doing those things like washing hands and social distancing and wearing those masks. Those things, although not fun and comfortable, and we understand that, um, 
It's helping keep our kids in school. It's helping keep our kids on the court and um, in that water swimming. And we appreciate your efforts and your support in doing that. This community is um, by far one of the most amazing communities I've ever met. So, or had the privilege of working with. So we appreciate all those things. Um, go out there, do great things, go Wildcats, and we will see you next Taco Tuesday. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.